This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. Hello and welcome to this edition of Pensacola State Today. We are so glad that you have joined us. We have an action-packed show today. You will not want to miss even one minute. First, what's cooking at Pensacola State College? Well, culinary arts is cooking. We'll take you into the kitchen. Also, we'll have a conversation with PSC President Dr. Meadows. Among other things, we'll talk about the way Pensacola State College is preparing students for the workforce and for well-paying jobs and veterinary technology. It's a career field that is bordering on explosive growth and we will show you what PSC is doing to help students get ready for that. And we will meet a real life lifesaver. He's a student at Pensacola State College. What's your favorite restaurant? What's your favorite dish at that restaurant? You know, all of those dishes are prepared by very talented chefs and those chefs had to learn how to prepare those dishes somewhere. Well, at Pensacola State College, there's an awesome culinary arts program that's going on and training students in all types of cuisine. And here to talk with us about that today are three gentlemen who have intimate knowledge of this program. And we'll start with uh, Roy Bracken, who is the department head. And then we move on to Chef David Langham, who is the instructor. And also we have a student with us today, Derek Beal. And thank you gentlemen so much for joining us today. Mm -hmm. Roy, let's start with you and let's talk about the culinary arts program at Pensacola State College. What makes it special? What makes it better than other programs, maybe at other schools, and why should a student want to be engaged with this program? It's a very special program. We have a lot of great regional cooks here in this area. The South, especially New Orleans, is really well known for their cooks. Most of us in this area grew up in our kitchens. We learned how to cook not in microwaves, but we learned to cook by scratch because most of us come from basically uh, uh, nuclear families, as we would call them. A lot of people love to eat. Uh, you can look at me and tell me I like to eat a lot. <laughs> Don't uh, but, we all? I uh, know, but there's uh, Pensacola in particular has grown so much for the. Uh, 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 a new taste. They want things besides the regular steak and potato menu and Pensacola State offers a full, full program in culinary arts comparable to the Johnson and Wales programs and the American, uh, the Culinary Institute of America in New York. Uh, I work with people from those programs in one of my uh, uh, areas of skills you would say that I work with and so I collaborate with them a lot. We have the advantage of having a $32,000 a year program for $3,000. So there's the distinct cost factor plus we have people who teach that are very well qualified from all over the world with many, many years of experience okay. that we have here. So. And segueing to that would of course be to Chef David Langham, make sure that I have your name correctly that there. Correct. Uh, you are just awesome. I have heard fabulous things about <laughs> what you do here. in the classroom with your students. Talk to me about what students in this program can expect to do, see, and learn when they are involved in these classes. Okay, when they begin the, the program, they start with two basic classes. It's uh, culinary techniques and professional baking. They lead on, that leads on, that's the basic knife skills and things like that, the basic cooking methods and baking methods. That, that follows on to uh, intermediate, which is the, where we serve, serve the public. That is uh, American cuisines, uh, classical cuisines and international cuisines. And then that leads further into a uh, advanced course, which is the garmage. Okay. So these students are actually getting their hands in the food and in the dishes and in the yes, oil yes. and all of those fun things that we we who are not in the kitchen associate it's, with cooking. Yes, it's very it's very hands-on lab-based instruction, and uh, we try to keep it, our class size very small to have that teacher, uh, teacher student interaction between Super. us, yes. And Derek Beal is a student in this program and I wanted to ask you, number one, why did you choose this field? Number two, why this particular program at Pensacola State College? And number three, what's your favorite part? <laughs> <laughs> well, I chose this field. I've always had an interest in cooking. 
So growing up, looking at what I wanted to do with my life and as a career, I always wanted to choose something that I would have an interest in. And so for culinary, that was just the obvious choice for me. Um, I was looking around and Pensacola State had a very economical program. They have an outstanding reputation. So for me to look at them and know that I can do what I want to do was just, it wasn't even a question for me, it was perfect. Okay, so you're in the classroom and you're, you're learning all of the, uh, the techniques and the skills to be a great chef. What's your favorite part? My favorite part is just being able to do everything that we can normally wouldn't be able to do at other places. We have some amazing equipment, we've got amazing instructors, so for us to be able to get our hands on and do the applications that we normally would not learn is just outstanding. Okay. So much fun. All right, well Chef Langham, let's talk about the different um, areas. Not only do the students learn how to prepare the food, they actually serve it. And this is a, pl a way where members of the community can actually see and taste what the students are learning in the classrooms. Talk to me about the lunch and dinner series. That is correct. Uh, Amer American regional cuisine is offered on Tuesday nights. International regional cuisines is uh, offered on Wednesday lunchtime, and classical cuisines is offered on Thursday night. And so what happens here is that you go to the website Pensacola State College and you enter yourself in a, um, you, you sign up and you get these tickets assigned to you and then you go and you participate in the dinner or the lunch as a member of the community. Yeah, it's more or less like a uh, random lottery process. Right. You can get a, you can get a ticket for each one, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, once a semester. We do have only have the dinners on spring and fall semester, but they can go online to culinary tickets at pensacolastate.edu and sign up like that. And it's all different kinds of cuisine. I'm from around the world. I was looking at your, your calendar of, of events, food from Africa. Uh, food from, I don't know, Indonesia, places that you might not necessarily always have access to. Right, we actually had African cuisine today on, for our lunch on Wednesday. Okay, awesome. So let's talk, Roy, about what's in the future for this program. Well, in the future, the people in Pensacola are asking a lot. Can, we want more. We only offer three meals a day. Most restaurants have five to seven days a week. So right now, as far as degrees go, we are looking at expanding into a bachelor's degree in restaurant management. Most of our restaurants around here like to have people with a bachelor's degree, and we are, that's a natural progress for us. Also for baking and pastry management. That's a growing field. Also, with our program, we have such a demand for people to come. We're expanding into another category on Fridays, Saturday nights, and Sunday afternoons. We're going with our Broadway a la carte dinner theater series. Really? I have a, a uh, background in theater. Actually, I started teaching in the theater department here first at Pensacola State, and it's a natural progress for us working with our performing arts department and the school so we can get more people in. So it's just another aspect. That's wonderful. So I'm going to put you guys on the spot before we go. We've talked about what your favorite part of the program is, but I want to know what's your favorite dish to prepare. We'll start with you, Derek. Okay. That is really a hard question. I like anything that is the high energy, high environment. Um, the flambéing is a lot of fun. That's where you can really get to interact with whoever you're doing it for. That would normally be a table side. So to do the fire the, and present it right there at the table, that's probably my favorite. All right, and Chef Langham, how about you? Can I'd, you pick just one? I'd have to go to uh, <laughs> the desserts, Charlotte Russe, the classical desserts, Charlotte Russe, mousses, uh, things like that. Okay. Those are the... Sounds like fun, and you know, if you ever need a taster, I'm available. <laughs> I'll Absolutely. give you my number. <laughs> Thank Gentlemen, so thank you so much for thank coming out and us. talking about the Culinary Arts Program at Pensacola State College. We're going to take a break and we will be right back for a conversation with Dr. Ed Meadows. Welcome back to Pensacola State Today. 
Joining us in the studio now is the president of Pensacola State College, Dr. Ed Meadows, and lots of exciting things going on at PSC to talk about. One of those, you know, the news has just been filled lately with news of Airbus, which of course is located not too far away in Mobile. And that bears the question, what might that mean for Pensacola State College and its students? Well, as the State College in Northwest Florida uh, charged uh, by mission with workforce development, it offers a, um, a prime opportunity for Pensacola State to engage uh, through partnerships uh, with uh, all of our economic development entities uh, within the state and also across state lines uh, to look at what the skilled trades might uh, need to be uh, with the development of the assembly line production at Airbus and, and of course Pensacola State working with the Chamber of Commerce um, is uh, exploring and talking with uh, businesses uh, abroad and uh, locally with Airbus to see what their workforce needs uh, are going to be uh, immediately and then extending into the future. And so students who, are, who might be interested in pursuing that line of employment, what would their plan of action be here at Pensacola State College? I think right now uh, what we uh, are waiting for is uh, notification by a primary or secondary tertiary uh, supplier to Airbus uh, to uh, express interest in locating in Northwest Florida. Uh, and as soon as that happens, uh, we would uh, be committed to gearing up to do specific, specific uh, kinds of training, uh, whether that be non-credit training or credit training in a certificate program. And, and of course, we already have uh, programs that have um, direct application to what's going on at Airbus in the manufacturing of those aircraft. Uh, for example, our uh, mechanical design and fabrication program is a multi-disciplinary uh, program that uh, teaches skill sets in a number of areas uh, that would allow students to apply those skill sets uh, uh, to their resume when they apply for positions at Airbus. And uh, with a federal grant uh, that we received two years ago uh, in partnership with Alabama uh, Community Colleges and other uh, state colleges in Florida, uh, we are going to uh, be operating by January a mobile training unit in uh, welding. Uh, we will take that to Century. Uh, there'll be virtual welding stations as well as real welding stations and also uh, distant ed courses uh, in the different aspects of, uh, of the different types of welding. And uh, Airbus will be employing many different kinds of welding. They'll be um, um, fabricating and also uh, constructing everything from steel to aluminum. Uh, and there's also an indication that Airbus will be willing to uh, actually transport uh, the workforce uh, from as far away as Century uh, to the plant. So these are good opportunities for the residents of Northwest Florida and certainly an opportunity for uh, Pensacola State to uh, strengthen its uh, manufacturing emphasis uh, for other potential uh, industry that might be uh, looking to locate in Northwest Florida. And one of the things that I see in the news when, it, when it's uh, reported about Airbus, these are good paying jobs too. Extremely good paying jobs. Uh, you're, you're talking about jobs that will be um, ranging from forty-five to $145,000 a year uh, for assembly line production depending on what uh, aspect of the aircraft uh, might be worked on. Okay. Another exciting program is in the medical field, and that would be for the psychiatric technician. Talk to us a little bit about that. Well, Drexel, as you know, our medical campus is in Warrington, where we offer uh, nursing and just a large cadre of uh, uh, allied health science programs. Our newest one is psychiatric technician, and this is a response to a local need uh, to have these technicians uh, present in uh, facilities uh, where uh, uh, there is um, uh, health care uh, for mental health. Mm -hmm. And uh, we uh, are starting this program up in January. It will be a short certificate program, so 450 clock hours, and that will uh, certify individuals for a quick start into the medical profession, just like phlebotomy, which is the drawing of blood. Um, and, and those are good uh, opening uh, careers into the um, 
uh, the medical field uh, that not only allows individuals that, that uh, wish to work part-time, but also that wish to work full-time. And certainly working part-time, they can come back to Pensacola State and pursue an associate degree in a health science uh, discipline as well. Pensacola State remains committed to not only educating the students who are here, but giving them the foundation and the tools to get them out into the workforce. Now that's exactly right, Drexel. And uh, we have uh, a, a really good track record, uh, particularly in the health science uh, field with um, placement of our graduates into the workforce. Um, those. Um, uh, the psychiatric technician and also the manufacturing emphasis uh, degree programs uh, for the spring term starts uh, coincidentally uh, January the 6th. That's right. In order to do this, you have to register <laughs> you first, registered, right? Got to get apply registered. apply for financial aid yeah. ahead of time. So, um, you know, we're, um, we're really excited about the future of Northwest Florida and the entire region uh, because of the renewed interest in manufacturing and also the existing industries that we have here and, and certainly uh, Northwest Florida and Pensacola is a medical hub where we uh, have a lot of uh, different programs. Right. Uh, we know and we're in November now and of course this is the month where we, we recognize the veterans who have served our country and of course this area is filled with, with veterans and the college itself has a very strong population of veteran students. A very, very nice recognition that Pensacola State College has received. Well, uh, yes, for the sixth year in a row, we have been recognized uh, as a military-friendly school, and only the top 20% of higher education institutions and, and trade schools are recognized in that category, and they have to meet certain criteria. Uh, we uh, have the only Upward Bound Veterans Program in the state, which is a federal program to help tutor and mentor uh, military personnel that have just left the military. Uh, plus, we offer uh, a large number of scholarships, not only to the uh, veterans, but active military and their spouses and children. So uh, we pride ourselves in that partnership since 1948. Uh, we have been serving the military, and uh, we look forward to uh, continuing to do that as well. Well, as always, we run out of time before we even begin to scratch the surface of so many topics and so many great things going on at the college. So I'll ask you what I do every show. Will you come back next time? Well, of course. Well, good. Thank you so much, Dr. Meadows, for being with us today. Thank you for the opportunity to be here today. All right. We will take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Pensacola State Today. As we've been discussing, Pensacola State College is committed to preparing students for the workforce. One career field that is bordering on explosive growth is veterinary technology. And of course, that's because of the huge numbers of companion animals and food animals and large animals that are in the world. And Pensacola State College has a terrific vet tech program. And here to talk with us today, the adjunct instructor for this program, as well as two students who are enrolled in it. And I would like to welcome to Pensacola State today, Kelly Foltz, and also Sabrina Tutt and Anthony Crow. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. Okay, now let's talk about the three adjectives that are most often used to describe PSC's vet tech program. And that would be unique, needed, and growing. Tell me why. Absolutely. So our program is unique because there's not a program that's similar to ours anywhere really in the Northwest Florida area. There are programs in South Florida, programs uh, in Georgia, but really until our program came along a couple of years ago, there's not a similar program anywhere nearby. So if someone was interested in getting a degree in veterinary technology, they had to complete distance learning. Uh, we are growing because this program has taken off like a rocket. Uh, for our next matriculating class, so the class that will start in the fall of 2014, we actually have between 125 and 130 people that are expressing interest in applying to the program. Goodness. So uh, it's, it's growing widely at a pretty ra rapid rate. Um, I believe that we offer things in our program that you really can't get anywhere else. So that's the other thing that makes us pretty special in the area. And needed because? Because, as you mentioned, there are 
millions of animals in the United States and worldwide, but we kind of try to focus on the United States. Uh, from your dog and cat to exotic animals, even zoo animals, food animals, and farm animals, uh, horses, and other species. So all of these animals require veterinary care. Uh, if you think about your companion animal that you probably have at home, he goes to the vet probably at least once a year, if not more often. Uh, and basically, the veterinary technician is there to provide uh, ancillary supportive health care uh, as a member of the team working with the veterinarian. Okay. So. Before we talk to the two students, tell me what students in this program can expect to do, see, and learn when they are enrolled in it. Tons. So. If you think about when you go to the human hospital or to your human doctor, there's someone that draws your blood, there's a radiology technician that takes your radiographs, there may be someone uh, that comes in and does nutrition counseling with you, talks about weight loss, there may be uh, a technician that's responsible for catheterization, uh, chemotherapy if you have cancer. So veterinary technicians, are basically trained in all these aspects of animal care. So veterinary technicians work in lab animal medicine, they work in general practice, so primarily preventative health care. They work in emergency and critical care. They can work at the racetrack, uh, working with horses. They can work at the university level um, in specialty practices. We can't forget um, things like rehabilitation, uh, reproductive medicine, uh, you know, for uh, like our cows and our horses. So really what you can expect from our program is to be trained in every aspect of animal health care. Okay, and lots of hands-on. Yeah, absolutely. That's something that we focus on. That's an advantage of a live program versus a distance learning program. Okay, great. Yeah. All right, now let's talk to the students. And what I want to hear from you is why you became interested in this career field, number one, and in this particular program at Pensacola State College. And Sabrina, we'll start with you. Um, being from a small child until now, I've always had animals. My grandfather instilled a lot of love and care for animals, so he is the reason that I'm doing it. He passed away two years ago, so I find a lot of interest in taking care of them and consoling them because they can't speak for themselves. Um, and I chose PSC because at the time in my life, after we built a house and had kids, I didn't want to uproot my children, and they had just opened the program, so I thought it was all you know, coming together, and it's a great program. Okay, Anthony, tell me what your desire was for a career field and then also why you chose this program and what you're getting out of this program. I've always loved animals since I was a kid. In fact, my mother used to check my pockets with rolling pins first because I'd pick up little critters and put them in there always as a kid. Um, I decided to go with this route because it is an actual class. It's not distance learning and the curriculum is amazing. I'm learning stuff every day. I love going to other clinics and seeing how different clinics operate and run because they all don't run the same and it's really interesting just to see everything. Talk to me about some of this hands-on. When you are in a classroom, tell other students what you do so what they could expect if they are thinking about this program. Um, well, like she said, venipuncture is one of the, you know, a, a major part of being a vet tech is being able to get you know, a sample quick and being able to run blood work, um, giving injections such as, you know, intramuscular or IV injections, um, also being able to place a catheter or set up different kinds of equipment during surgery, prepping for surgery. Um, we're able to do all this and that's what we get hands on at school with. Now, Kelly, let's talk a little bit about the specific types of careers that a graduate of this program might expect to be able to pursue. Sure. So our graduates, it's a two-year degree. It's an associate of science. So that degree prepares you to be an entry-level veterinary technician. So then you take the veterinary technician national exam and you become, uh, in the state of Florida, you're considered to be certified. In other states, you might be registered or licensed. Okay. So that will enable you to get a job in a general practice. Uh, you can go to work at a university. You can go to work in research. Uh, if you're interested in things like zoo medicine, those jobs are open to you. Uh, if you are interested in working in production animal medicine, so for example swine or cattle or dairy medicine, you can get a job with that degree. So pretty much once you have your um, associate degree in veterinary technology, the world is kind of your oyster. You can become a practice manager, 
for a clinic if you're interested in that, or you can pursue one of the nine specialties that are available with kind of advanced training um, for technicians. Okay, so this program is located on the Warrington campus, and we were out um, some time ago getting some video, and we had video of students um, doing, what is it, palpations? Doing their physical exams. Okay. Yeah, uh, palpation um, is part of that. Okay, so where do these animals come from? So these animals come from Santa Rosa Animal Services. We have a close and very affectionate relationship with them. They very early on were willing to let us uh, use their animals for our live animal laboratories. We have strict animal safety and comfort protocols in place, so none of the animals are harmed while we're um, maintaining them on campus. And they're available for adoption uh, the entire time that they're on campus. So uh, if you're interested in coming by to see the animals, we usually have dogs and cats. Um, in spring and fall, not during the summer semester. We have actually had several adoptions, probably about 10 take place um, from animals being on campus. Super, all right, so we have about 30 seconds left. Anthony, I wanna get back to you and ask you what's your most favorite part of this program? What do you most enjoy? I most enjoy the large animal aspect of it because I've always wanted to work with horse and cattle, so we have an excellent teacher to teach <laughs> us all of that great stuff. I just like being able to learn why things work the way they work and why you use certain drugs or certain um, procedures to fix things because you know it and you know what you're supposed to do but when you know why you're doing it it makes it a lot more fun. And you said you have about 130, 45 um, students, yeah, that potential students. Yes. So what's the first step they need to take? So the first step is probably to contact our program director, Jeannie Peden, okay. um, and you can find her information on the Pensacola State website if you look up the veterinary technology program. And then she can walk you through the application process. There are some core requirements that have to be met before you can apply. Uh, and then you enter the application process. Right now, uh, we have open admissions, so pretty much uh, we have about 24 slots um, for students. So uh, the students that meet the requirements, uh, which include volunteer hours at a local area clinic, you do have to do some observation to make sure the field is right for you mm -hmm. um, before you apply. That's smart. Yeah, because some people do find that it's not for them. Uh, but basically that gets you on track the application process. So Super. that's where you begin. Well, thank you so much for coming out today and talking to us about this wonderful program and uh, the best of luck to both of you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. We're going to take a break and when we come back, you're going to meet a real life lifesaver. You never know where you may run into a real-life lifesaver. You may run into one on a college campus. You may even run into one on the campus of Pensacola State College. PSE student Aaron Heitzelman is a lifesaver. Last spring, this 20-year-old became aware of a drive to get people in Pensacola to register for the National Bone Marrow Registry. Very quickly, it was determined he was indeed a match for someone who was in, quote, dire need of a bone marrow transplant. Aaron answered the call. I felt I'm his best chance at living, and even if I'm giving him a couple more weeks or multiple years, it's more time with his family than he had before. I'm on cloud nine right now. It's, it's a great feeling uh, to know that I have possibly saved somebody's life. Aaron says he would do it all over again. What a great guy. And we're proud that he's a student at Pensacola State College. That's gonna do it for this edition of Pensacola State Today. We are so glad that you've joined us. We'll see you next time. <music>